and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I doing? So today I'm going to address some of the comments I've been receiving on the past couple of videos. I always love to answer your questions and I do. This time I'm going to take answering your questions to another level. Basically I'm going to do what you guys asked me the most. So one of the questions I got multiple times was with the NAS that I built last video. If you haven't seen that video go check that out. I built a NAS with Raxa Rock. 5a pink edition which does have a 16 gigabyte ram right and also i did it with the raspberry pi 5 right and uh, we built zfs based raid on this one software raid on this one and every, we tested everything so one of the questions i got was would it work with 2.5 regular hard drives not ssds regular hard drives and the answer is yes but i want to show you that's one of the things that i got asked a lot number two i got asked was what if we use a 2.5 gigabit usb 3 adapter and would that make it fast and which ones are compatible with raspberry pi 5 or the rock 5 and uh, another question i got was that okay i kept saying during the reviews of when i was comparing all boards or when i'm comparing the rock 5a to raspberry pi and so on especially this board supports multiple displays and supports 8k resolution and the higher refresh rate and everything else as I was talking also about the HDMI standard which is HDMI 2.1 on this one but that's HDMI 2.0 in Raspberry Pi 5 someone said okay how about the display port that you were talking about because I said that these boards Rock 5A, Rock 5B and the Rock 5A Pink does have a USB host and you can set it the USB-C or you can set it as the display port. So I want to try that and I got two cables for that for USB-C to display port. So I got this one. As you can see this is display port in here and USB-C over here. Okay so that's one and I got another one to test. So we're going to test that. We're going to test 2.5 gigabit uh, USB 3 on the Raspberry Pi NAS and also I got asked that one why are you not showing any display port use in any of the boards you review? Which is a very good suggestion. I never did. I always say, you know, when I was doing review of the Rock 5A, I just say there is a display port over there in the Raspberry Pi. As you can see here, there is a CSI and DSI ports in here in the Raspberry Pi 5. But we never connected anything to it, right? I just said it does have that. So in this video, I got myself one of these bad boys. Why? Max it, YMAX IT, or however they pronounce it. It's the model M1012. Okay, I got this off Amazon and it's a touch screen, it's 10.1 inch, and it had a lot of good reviews. I just uh, found this on Amazon and honestly it just shipped in a day. So I don't know, and it's already sealed. I just bought it, so we're gonna test that. So, long story short, testing the display, touch screen, uh, we're gonna test a uh, USB 2.5, USB 3, and how it affects the speeds of the NAS on the Raspberry Pi 5, and we're gonna try 2.5 regular hard disk and we are going to see if the display port works on these boards that we are saying that they support display port over USB-C. So let me connect the Ethernet and let's start with the 2.5 easily so I want to see if the speed changes at all on let's say Raspberry Pi 5. Okay let's start with that. I'll be right back. Okay so let's start. I honestly don't know anything about any of these brands. Wavelink? I guess I don't know we are going to take this out okay all right so this is it and looks neat you can use USB-C side of it or USB-A so if you plug this into here you get the USB-A let's go with USB-A because that's Raspberry Pi's USB 3 port so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this here okay and let me prepare the power so that's the power cable and also let me grab an Ethernet cable and HDMI cable so we got HDMI and Ethernet all right so we plug the hdmi we plug the ethernet to this yeah i believe we got it okay i also brought mouse and keyboard just in case we need it if the ip didn't work or something you know let's plug that in 
Okay, so Ethernet is connected and HDMI is connected and let's power it on. Turned on, okay, you're getting somewhere. Okay, as you can see, the network service doesn't start. I assume the Ethernet is not set up yet, at least on the USB 3. Let's see. So out of box, that USB 3 port did not work on Raspberry Pi for Ethernet, right? That one didn't work. Probably, I'm assuming it's related to drivers. Let's see. Yep. That's the first device, Realtek Semiconductor, USB. I don't see that in here. I'm assuming it is the driver issue. So we are in and uh, let's see if it worked. Well, I don't see that device in here. Uh, those the last two are related to Docker. The Docker is Docker and then WLAN is the wireless and Ethernet is the Raspberry Pi's Ethernet. So if we do LSUSB, that's the Realtek. And out of box, it didn't work it requires probably some driver let me open up all these other ones maybe one of them will work without a driver if none of them work without a driver i will try to fix the driver how about that deal let me try that this looks like the other one very similar okay just in case you're trying and also this one once they work i will share more details of that on the screen but so far none of them work so this one is USB-C. let's try to remove this and plug this one in okay let's see the light is on as you can see here okay and if we do ls usb again uh yeah it looks like the same chip so probably this one also didn't work yep oh did it i see some changes what changed here okay so i don't think that one worked let's try the last one and this one is also probably using the same chip but i'm gonna try it anyway Okay, so none of them work out of box. That's very important to remember, okay? Now I have to figure out the driver situation. So for that, let me see the chip that is used on these ones. I will be right back. All right, so here's what I did. I will put the link in the description below. I downloaded the driver, so let me try to install it, see if it works. okay the out of box it doesn't work i downloaded the correct driver so let me see okay let's reboot and see if that made any change so just fyi i'm rebooting but all of these usb 2.5 boards they are all using realtek rtl 8156b so there is not really much difference so these come with usb c and usb a connector so only one that's uni brand that's the only one that only does have usb c port usb c connector but all of them use the same chip and uh, yeah this one is uh, USB-C only so what I bought was these two there is no real difference between these two honestly so this is 2.5 that's 2.5 USB-C and USB-A USB-C and USB-A and both are using the same RTL chip which is RTL 8156B okay let's try this again Okay, I'm going to connect to internet because I need some packages. Oh, so I see the ETH zero there. Hold on a second. Let me try again. Oh, that worked. I'm sorry. So zero network device was the default Ethernet adapter. The ETH zero that we saw was actually from this one. Okay. So yeah, that was working. I did not notice that. So I'm sorry. So we just installed basically a rules file in UTCDU dev and rebooted it. That's it. So it's not that I will put that in the description. So we didn't do anything. So it is connected now. Okay. Let's check the speed. Yep, as you can see on the screen, all right, speed is 2.5 megabyte per second. So we got the USB Ethernet working on this device. So let me remove that USB thing, okay, and give this a reboot.
Okay, we are back, so let's check. Okay, so we have an IP address, 172.16.1.24. Okay, let's switch to this one. And if we log in, okay, so we are logged in and it is up and running on a 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And if we see that in here, yeah, there you go. So we got the internet and let's now test the speed. Let's make sure the share and everything is up and running. Okay, now let's try. 172.16.1.24 Okay, so we have this. Now let's copy from the Raspberry Pi NAS with 2.5 gigabit ethernet to our computer and let's see the speed. Now let's copy this 10 gigabyte file to my computer. Oh wow, there you go. We doubled the speed. As you can see now, we are copying 200 megabytes per second from the NAS to my computer over 2.5 gigabit ethernet using that RTL chip. So to the viewer who suggested it, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the idea. So if anyone else who wants to try this, you just need to buy any of these boards really. By the way, nothing here or any of my videos is not sponsored and I don't know any of these companies i'm just telling you i tried and it works okay so i bought these two pluggable usb whatever this is one that's two and these are using the same chip and as you can see we got a 200 megabytes per second copy from nas to my computer now let's try the opposite and i'm going to copy and rename this to test two copy this back to the nas yeah same thing actually we're getting higher rate right speeds yeah right is a little bit faster 220 224 so we are capping almost the 2.5 gigabit ethernet over samba so this is great actually so if anyone wanted a budget nas that uses a raspberry pi and raspberry pi hat or rock 5a pink or any other rock 5 you can absolutely go for it this hat from raxa simply rocks for building small tiny nas you can make a 3d case for this and put it in somewhere in your room and forget about it honestly and uh, you will be able to just plug a usb 3 2.5 gigabit ethernet and that's the speed you are going to get okay so we are done with the first test the second test that i wanted to do and show you guys i actually have done it i tested it before but i just want to show you that you can absolutely plug in 2.5 hard disk drives right regular hard disk drive not the ssd ones but the regular drives so let me switch and remove this very quick okay i removed that this is the hat let's open up one of these and we are going to plug that in okay that's number one open that second one okay i'm not gonna lock it down because i'm not going to use it this way but anyway i just want to show you guys that it works okay so i plugged two 2.5 hard disk drives and each of these bad boys these are by the way as you can see are western digital two terabytes SATA 6 gigabyte per second uh, hard disk drives. They are very fast. So let's shut down this NAS. Okay, now let's remove the Ethernet. Okay. Okay, as you can see, two, both of the LEDs are on. Okay, we have the IP address. Now let's go to the admin interface. Okay, so the same. We log in. I just want to show you guys that it works, okay? Storage, disks, there you go, all right? So you can absolutely use this NAS a Raspberry Pi or Rock 5 SATA hat from Raxa with 2.5 and even 3.5 hard disk drives. So yes, it absolutely works. You don't need SSD hard disk drives, right? So these are like eight terabytes and these are four terabytes SSDs, so they are I think like four or five hundred, but this is like 80 bucks. Okay, but this is also lower in storage, but I'm just saying regular 2.5 or 3.5 works. But I don't think you can plug 3.5 this way. You are going to say the extender cable and put it in some rack or some case or something. Okay, so we are done with this one as well. Let me shut down this NAS properly. So, so far we tested 2.5 gigabit ethernet. We tested 2.5 inch uh, hard disk drives. Now on to the next challenge. 
next thing that you guys, the viewers, told me about, okay? So yeah, we are done with these adapters. I'm gonna put them aside. Let's open this bad boy. Let's see how this one looks. So let me bring it centered out, okay? Nice, hopefully they have enough documentation for me. Mm, okay, so something like this. I'm not gonna remove the cover first. Oh, that's nice. Actually, this is not DisplayPort. Oh, it uses HDMI. So this is like an external display. It doesn't use that DSi port, but it is supposed to be touch screen. So let me check. Okay, we have the documentation. We have cloths for cleaning the display. Okay, it does have everything. Let me take this out. Okay, so what we got here. Okay, so this is probably the stand where you can put the screen on it. These, uh, I assume, speakers. Looks like that. The speakers too, actually. So here, I'm just guessing there should be right and left, maybe. So this is the earphone, power, touch, and display. And there's another display here. And there's also backlight and volume here. Oh, this is a slider. Okay, so you can play and increase and decrease. Okay, looks nice. There are one HDMI cable and one USB micro cable which is used to power this and there's also that is very nice this is micro so you can actually use this if you are putting it in a case or something these are for the corners and for the case okay let's read the manual so in the manual HDMI interface touch interface so HDMI is the regular the HDMI and then there is also touch interface which happens with the micro USB but I hope they have drivers and everything I guess because they were selling it on Amazon as a Raspberry Pi touch screen. So we're gonna check that. So we connect to laptop or PC power supply okay so that's basically for putting the raspberry pi here oh i see there is this slot where you can attach the raspberry pi and use this basically like this to connect it to the raspberry pi port or similar boards which raspberry pi does not have a full-size hdmi and therefore they provided another one now it makes sense okay so they provided this one. So this probably plug to Raspberry Pi and this is for this HDMI port here. Something like this. So now you can put the HDMI of the Raspberry Pi in here, okay? But I was expecting it to be the display port display so we can test the display port but this is a regular hdmi touch monitor yeah this is actually very nice they provided so many accessories and i think it was like 70 bucks something like that i don't remember it was on amazon i got it so they are saying raspbian mate kali even and retro pie wow okay yeah so there is a software i guess for it not really no software they are just saying modify the config.txt and add these lines to it which is about the display and it looks like it's 1024 so yeah you have to configure that in the raspberry pi in order to make this display work and there is no documentation i guess for assembly or anything like that yeah, it doesn't seem like it but i think it's easy to figure out something like that i figured it out so the two on the corner in here you can basically so there is a hole in the middle of these so you just align this to this this way and screw it in so you do that same thing over here so that's basically the stand for the monitor so let me grab the screws they also provided a screwdriver i'm gonna use it so this is the screwdriver and this is the long screws for this monitor and it's better if you remove that tape the yellow tape over it okay okay that was easy so yeah you take this you put that in and remove the tape and we plug that in and screw with confidence okay i guess something like that no the other way okay so i was wrong this way 
I assume this way. There is not a real like assembly documentation. They assume that the viewer is not as dumb as me, so they will figure it out on their own. So yeah, it's not hard, but yet something like that. Okay, so we got that and it is like this. Okay, so you will be able to put that like that and use the HDMI cables. Sorry, this wasn't what I was intended to do, like using the display port. I got this one, but yeah, this one is also very nice overall. It's like 80 bucks on Amazon that's I just checked and it comes with display ports touch screen and everything so let me connect this using the HDMI cable provided by them to Raspberry Pi and see if it works out of box Hey, let's test it out actually with this one, the Rock 5. And let's see if it works with Rock 5. Oh, that was uh, its own in there. Uh, let me remove this. Oh yeah. So, yep, it is working as intended with honestly no change. Even the config thing was not necessary, at least not for me. So, and it's working with Rock 5A. I didn't even use the display for it, so HDMI. No modification needed on the config for me, and it is working. So, let me see if I can get the touch. Okay, let me switch up. This one I don't have the desktop environment because it uses the open media vault. Let me grab the other Raspberry Pi. I will be right back. Okay, so very quickly, let me also show you something else. So this is, this seems like you can remove the tape and it's sticking and you connect that to these ports. So two speakers left and right. So let me do that real quick. Okay, that one is in. Something like that. Okay, so you install the two speakers left and right and plug those in. All right, so I brought the old Raspberry Pi which I use in other videos and let's see how it goes. Okay. All right, so let's try this out and let me plug the power. Okay, and let's see. Oh, I see something on the screen. And also I noticed it showed that the speakers made some noises. So let's see. Oh yeah. So, yep, it is definitely working. Okay, so when it tries to go into the desktop environment, I think the resolution mismatch is happening and it's just blinking. So let me see. Okay, I guess yes. In order to get this to work, you need those config changes in the system. So let me make those changes and I will be right back. Ta-da! We are back. So let me show you what I did. First of all, let me show you that everything is working. Okay, so we can use this like this and uh, you will be able to just, you know, use the screen. But let me show you what's happening in here. So in here, I only can connected the power connector as you can see so here we connected using their own uh, supply converter so HDMI the micro HDMI to HDMI and in here I use their adapter as well as you can see so USB micro to USB a okay so here and this one is my keyboard that is irrelevant and they had the stands as you can see in here right so you put the stands underneath and then you can screw and lock the Raspberry Pi 5 in place to use it like a tablet and does have the speakers and it's very neat and it's very compact you know the only thing you really need is just power connection and if you want to take it away this is all you have to take away everything is in one bundle one package okay so we're done with that as well let's move on to the last part which was the display port and to confirm and check if the Raspberry Pi competitors where they claim that they support the display port do they actually do that let me connect and wire up the rock 5 and i will be right back well 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 won't you look at that first try so i use this star tech with the power delivery one right the other one won't work you need one with the power delivery and i use the rock 5b that boots from my ssd okay and look at the results on the screen capture card is not going to work because i don't have a display port capture card okay as you can see now i am on 4k resolution with 
120 hertz refresh rate and i am going to actually try to increase it to 144 let's see yep that one works too so we are at the 4k resolution with 144 hertz so yeah that's where this type of words rock 5a rock 5b shines okay so as you can see there is no hdmi connection no display connection absolutely no connection whatsoever zero cables connected okay just one usb-c which does have the power and the display port cable connected with this star tech com adapter okay so yeah to the viewer who told me uh, that they want to know that i kept saying that these boards have display port support and so on he wanted to see that and here is what you guys wanted to see so so to recap everything okay what we did was we tried this display which was perfectly capable of doing running the raspberry pi 5 you know all the adapters were in the box and i was able to get it to work touch screen is working and we were able to get the rock 5 to boot with a single USB-C and also have the display port connected to it with 144 Hertz and the 4k resolution you can't do that in Raspberry Pi and what else we did was we tried two 2.5 inch hard disk drives with the Raxar SATA hat and it worked as well and finally we tried these 2.5 gigabit Ethernet USB 3 adapters and we were able to get it to work and basically double our NAS speed and we were able to get like 200 megabyte copy 220 megabytes sometimes write speeds so yep I hope I answered all your questions gave you some more ideas to speed up your tiny NAS as you can see it's very small so this is pretty much your going to be your NAS with 2.5 gig adapter is going to be also super fast we covered display port no regular hard disk drives work and we also touched on this touch screen that was on amazon okay i hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching and if you have other ideas like this please keep them coming if you want me to test and try things like this and i did it for you i bought a bunch of usb 2.5 g adapters just in case and i bought hard disk drives just in case and display port adapter from star tech come just in case so and also i bought another one so unfortunately the ones like these won't work just so you be aware because there's a single usb-c port so you need one with a power delivery okay so yeah if you want me to test anything else show me how to do thing, these things anything special let me know and thanks for watching i will see you in the next video bye for now